Good morning, good afternoon. This is today's geospatial webinar session, and we are talking about Trimble Track Survey and Scanning. So I'm here with my colleague, uh, Matt Moss. Matt is located in the UK, and he's covering uh, the UK, France, and Australia. Matt, how many years of experience do you have in, in the railway industry? Are well, we it's, uh, we're, yeah, we're probably pushing 20 years now. Um, 20 years. Yeah, it's uh, just, I just can't, I can't leave it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's, that's also in, in construction and railway yeah. um, design and uh, construction. My name is Stefan. I recently joined the track survey and scanning team uh, end of last year. I'm within Trimble for about 20 years uh, in different roles. I'm located in Westminster, Colorado, and I'm covering for the Americas. Before we get started, I just uh, took a snapshot of our geospatial website uh, with probably products that you all have heard of, all have seen, our receivers, our toll stations, laser scanners, handheld solutions. Uh, there's a bunch of, of uh, survey tools uh, we, we are known for as Trimble. Uh, but we also have specialized solutions and uh, the railways solution uh, is, is also part of it for several years now. So this is something probably not everyone is aware of. And this is why we decided to use those webinar series this year to uh, introduce to you to our solutions in the railway industry. Before I get started, I pulled a few numbers uh, showing currently ongoing railway infrastructure projects. This could be building new track. This can be maintain, maintaining new uh, track, existing track. This can also uh, involve building tunnels for railway or building bridges for railway or, or platforms. Um, so this is a worldwide picture, um, and you can see those hotspots, uh, those red, uh, which is a positive thing because there's a lot of uh, activities going on in railway. On the right hand side, you see uh, the construction volume, the dollars uh, spent in those projects. Uh, again, this is everything that you see here is ongoing projects, um, projects that have been started maybe a few years ago, but are still uh, going on. Um, the next slide is a picture of the so-called pipeline, you know, projects that have been uh, in, in the design phase or in a pre-construction phase. Uh, and this is showing you uh, the dollar amount spent also from this year uh, for the next five years uh, for projects that are upcoming, right? There's no no um, work in the field usually being done at that point, but there's a lot of uh, projects lined up uh, to be started very soon. Um, and and you, you can see this, this uh, dollar spend, which is significant. And everything here is related to railway infrastructure. So going, going back, uh, here's a very classic approach of track surveying, right? And this is something, the picture to the left is a fairly recent picture. Um, it is still being in use uh, almost daily somewhere in the world where you have a rail shoe, uh, a mechanical total station, uh, and then you measure kind of point by point on track to come up with uh, um, an S-built survey. Uh, on the right hand side, there's also a tool that was used, kind of looks like a level uh, on a track. And, and this is, uh, these are tools uh, that are still out there and being, being in use. And these are solutions yeah. where, where Trimble has developed uh, dedicated devices. Steph, uh, Stefan, Steph? Yeah, Steph can I just interrupt me? Stefan, excuse me, the, the screen slide isn't changing, isn't when you oh. press, it's not, it's the pause. I apologize. Let, let me just go back <laughs> to a slide I didn't see. Uh, the here. Um, yeah, this, this is us again. Sorry for, for this for this uh, technical issue here, uh, Matthew and myself. Um, here are the two pictures that are more relevant that I was showing with the ongoing railway infrastructure projects, giving you some numbers um, and a graphical overview where in the world those projects are happening as we speak. Uh, this is the, the pipeline, uh, a similar picture uh, you see the focus areas uh, and railway projects are still similar, but there's other areas popping up with, with new uh, projects in this uh, field. Uh, and this is the picture I was just talking uh, about last with um, 
you know, a very manual approach to track surveying. And, and this is exactly where we, where we started developing solutions to make, to make this work easier and more productive. So here's a, a highlight overview of what the Trimble Gato solutions are. The Gato portfolio is useful for track survey scanning applications here. Uh, it is uh, designed to do relative measurements relative to the track. Uh, we can also add uh, absolute control and have an absolute geodetic track survey. Uh, it can be used to design track uh, or for track construction, whether it be a ballasted track or a slab track or a direct fixation or embedded track. Uh, we can use the solutions for pre-measuring for tamping, you know, those tamping machines that uh, can correct and fix a track position. Um, an application that became more and more important over the years is uh, scanning for clearance and as a documentation. So we put a laser scanner on the trolley uh, and can scan from the trolley and see exactly what's relevant from a track perspective. And then the last bullet point here is uh, not our main focus in geospatial, but we have a very good uh, handover here to our colleagues in machine control uh, with basically uh, assisting the construction process with uh, machine control systems to, to build up the subgrade before sleepers and, and ballast uh, is being put out. So uh, the end over here. Uh, the other products that you see here are pretty much known geospatial solutions. You know, the tablets, uh, TC3, TC7, our total savings receivers, laser scanners. That yellow box down there is, a, is a, an IMU, an inertial measurement unit uh, we developed that can also go on the trolley. So a few examples of what the trolley solutions can do. This is a very simple uh, and uh, quick quality check solution. It's the trolley with a handheld and a software called Gato Dock. And all the system does is uh, it provides you with the gauge measurement, uh, the CAN or super elevation, uh, the change information where it is on the track based on an odometer. And if you push it over a certain distance, it also tells you what the twist is between the left and the right rail. That solution is not an absolute solution. You don't have absolute uh, 3D coordinates for that. Um, and you also don't measure the curvature, but it's a very simple uh, quality check of the existing track. The solution here shown in the picture is, is a similar setup. In addition to that, we, we added this IMU um, and our system name is the Trimble Gato IMS. In addition to the gauge, cant, and twist, so we can now measure the horizontal and vertical curvature coming from the IMU unit on the system here. So this is for an enhanced uh, geometry quality check. Now when we start adding reference points, control points, uh, a reference network, uh, here's a picture where we usually recommend our, our users uh, to put control points. So typically you have your catenary mass every 65, uh, 200 something feet apart from each other. And uh, if you uh, install one of those bolt types we offer and, and uh, uh, coordinate those points with a, with a, typically with a traverse, with an optical total station, uh, then you have very, very well lasting uh, control points that are also very close to the track. So whenever you have work to do on the track and if you need to push the trolley through and get a position for that trolley, uh, those points are uh, conveniently lo located uh, and you just need to uh, put a, a prism uh, on it and start, start measuring from your total station. Of course, there's other marking methods like this, this ground marking uh, solution here or uh, any kind of bolts uh, installed in, in existing infrastructure around the track is also possible here. Uh, if you use GNSS to position the trolley, um, of course you can use your reference station, your local base uh, with a radio, uh, or you can use uh, any kind of VRS solution, network RTK. This is just an example here from our VRS uh, system that we operate uh, in most parts of the world. And uh, now looking into an absolute uh, track as build solution, uh, which comes here with a, with a Trimble Gator rack solution. So with that, uh, typically you use a total station, 
uh, that you either have on, on a known point or to a resection. Uh, it's a very it's a typical geodetic approach. Um, it's used for documentation and redesign with a high accuracy. Um, you use your existing reference points, similar to the ones that I was just showing to you. And in addition to the can gauge and twist measurement, you can now also get the coordinates of the center line uh, of the left and the right rail. So now you have a, a fully coordinated position of the track and you get the quality from uh, the trolley readings as well. Uh, and with that, you can also calculate the curvature. The picture to the right is our office software, uh, Trimbulgedo office. Uh, and this is how it looks like if you uh, put several measurements from different total station setups together um, and it will be um, adjusted with the best fit method. Um, and that's what your result looks like. Alternatively to an optical total station, you can also use a GNSS solution here. So instead of the prism on the trolley, you use uh, a mast and a receiver. Um, it can be any Trimble receiver. This is a picture here of a Trimble R10. Um, R12 is also supported. And um, it's, it gives you basically also a, a track documentation uh, for documentation purposes and, and redesign purposes, but with medium accuracy, right? Uh, the system, the overall accuracy is, is limited by, by the RTK accuracy that is uh, uh, achievable, right? But you get the same basic um, results. You get uh, the center line coordinates, left and right rail, uh, and then from your trolley, you get the can gauge and twist measurements. This is a solution where we combine the Gedo IMS system, the inertial measurement unit, with the profiler. And with that, uh, with the profiler, you would also be able to measure your uh, offsets to existing control points next to the track. Uh, and based on that, you will also get uh, a fully coordinated um, as built uh, for, for the same purposes for documentation and redesign um, and uh, with, with high accuracy. And I'm handing over to my colleague Matt to take us through the rest of the slides. Okay, so once you've captured um, obviously this survey, this survey data, um, generally, uh you are or well, you've been asked to uh, hand it over to a, a designer to where, where, where no alignment data is existent uh exists um or um we can uh within the within the guido world uh use a piece of software called guido novatrack and guido novatrack allows us to um create generate an alignment um particularly useful where you know, there's been a significant drift from that initial design position. Uh, for example, if uh, the track's been tamped, relatively tamped um, without an alignment and it's just been moved and smoothed and you want to bring it back to its, uh, to it, to its original, um, original position. Um, and Gita Nova track is excellent for this, whereby we can uh, export data from Guido office that we've uh, processed, like Stefan mentioned, and um, a file can be opened within uh, Guido Nova Track and uh, generate the various elements of horizontal, vertical, and uh, account super elevation geometry. Okay. Um, okay, so. So once this alignment or this data has been uh, imported into the Guido Nova Track, um, we've got the ability to um, apply parameters as it's being imported these parameters are are applied to the uh, to the data um, and we can actually create um, various profiles so depending on the track speed the line speed of the uh, of the railway line we can uh, apply various parameters uh, we can select the profiles and um, we can uh, generate and calculate a best fit to limitations uh, approach which is very useful because obviously, depending on the various line speeds within a country, um, we can apply different um, settings to, the, to, this, uh, to this calculation. Um, okay. Next, please. 
so another field application that we uh, that we that we um, have implemented um, is called Guido Track, and uh, Guido Track allows us to use uh, an alignment, um, a design alignment, to position uh, rails that are going to be installed on um, slab track. So we're looking at scenarios of uh, light rail projects, uh, metro, um, over bridges, or even um, tramway where groove rail is uh, is being installed. So Gida Nova Track will give us the ability to um, set up the, the total station, as you can see in the left-hand picture. So it'll probably be a resection and then uh, shoot to the uh, the trolley. This is a prism located on, on the trolley. And then live in the field, you can see in the middle uh, image uh, values that will uh, allow the, the engineers in the field to adjust uh, the rails individually to their correct position. Um, so that therefore is, is is a very accurate and precise way of uh, of installing um, a slab track, um, and uh, and finally we can also generate a quality uh, survey report. We have um, the ability within the office software to um, uh, generate uh, user defined reports or actually slab track specific reports as well. Okay, thanks, Steph. Okay. We also have um, the ability, we also have a piece of software, Guido SPS, which allows us to um, adjust um, prefabricated slab uh, that have been um, manufactured in a factory and then delivered to site. Um, there are various uh, slabs available, as you can see down below. Um, in the in the left hand image, we can see the total station set up and on each track bar uh, is, a, is a prism and readings and measurements are taken to these uh, targets, whereby the software will then inform via an LCD screen um, the, the, the values to adjust the, the slab itself. This is a very specific um, slab adjustment used uh, predominantly in, uh, in high speed rail. Um, so it's, uh, it's it's quite a niche um, approach. So instead of running high speed trains on on ballast, in this case we're we're running them on um, on, on prefabricated slabs. Okay, thank you very much. So back onto uh, onto onto ballasted track, um, we have the ability. Steph mentioned that the we provide a solution for pre measurement for tamping whereby we uh, have a design alignment um, and we have uh, solutions to, to measure the track, compare it to the alignment, and then um, generate values for the tamping machines. So certain tamping machines, for those who don't know, um, have uh, computers in them, whereby they can read uh, geometry and uh, lift and shift, lift and slew values, together with uh, stationing and chainage. Um, there are several manufacturers uh, in the world, obviously. There are Plasa, Plasa and Teurer, as, um, excuse my pronunciation, um, Harsco, we have the Matisa, Tampas. So there's a variety of uh, systems that we, we uh, provide um, the, 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 the formats to, to, for data to be read. Um, not only the, the measurements taken by the, um, by the, uh, the systems, the, the Guido systems uh, are, are created, but also we can export the geometry files that are necessary as well. Um, so in certain systems, there's a geometry file and also um, a lift and shift, or in others, there's just a combination of, of, uh, of that data in one single file. Okay, thanks, Steph. Okay. Went the wrong way, sorry. No. Where are we going? Right. So we mentioned earlier how uh, the, the, the Guido track solution can be used on, uh, on, on uh, slab track installation and adjustment, but we can also use it on ballast. Um, so on certain sites, um, you've, got the, uh, you've got the ability to set up a tripod um, with the total station set up resection generally or known station setup um, and you can shoot to the uh, the target on the prism and you have the uh, the ability to record um, 
uh, delta values to design from which we can then process and create tamping files. Uh, this is an interesting approach. Um, it's a geodetic approach. Um, you obviously see the live information in the field, but obviously carrying tripod legs and targets and uh, associated equipment along the track and having to um, keep up with the tamper is something that uh, for those who've done it know it's a tiresome task. So we do have a solution in the next slides uh, whereby we can speed speed that up and become more productive and more efficient. So instead of actually having the, the, the instrument on the tripod, we've now placed it on the uh, on, on, a, on a second trolley. So the both trolleys are measuring uh, the, the, count, uh, the count and gauge. And it's this is a twin trolley solution. And we've implemented a long cord method whereby we're able to, to shoot. Uh, we're using the total station uh, to, to these, uh, these, uh, these reference points that are within the corridor. Generally, every 150 meters, for example, they can go up to up to 200, but generally it's that sort of uh, distance um, whereby we position the cord. So we are actually positioning the cord, and eventually we push the um, the uh, prism trolley towards the instrument trolley, and uh, and proceed up the track. So you can see it's a very fast and efficient way of of working um, with the productivity. You're probably looking about a kilometre and a half, 1,800 metres an hour of, of, of track survey. So it's, it's, it's a highly productive way of, of, of surveying and, and, and measuring the track uh, for tamping. Um, OK, Steph, thanks. Now, on certain, um, certain cases, obviously, we, what we can do is we can arrive prior to the to the tamping um, operation and we can pre-measure with this with the Vorsis system collect the information live in the field and process it uh, on the in the guido office software now what we can also do at the same time is um, once that data has been provided into the tamper fire up the tamper and then come behind it and measure to not only check what the tamper is doing but also collect data for the following tamping run OK, so generally two, three, four passes uh, are required, uh, depending on the installation. And um, there's a very, uh, the, the turnaround time is very, very, very quick, because what you don't want is obviously to have the temper standing idle um, while you're, you're processing data. Um, you should be able to do this very, very quickly within, within, within half an hour. Uh, of, of, of data collection and uh, being able to hand over the, uh, the, the information to the tamper driver. Okay, Steph. Now, on certain sites, um, obviously there are there could be line of sight issues. There could be um, a lot of personnel on site. You know, people installing overhead lines. Um, installing uh, switches adjustments and, and, and whatnot on site but what we're able to do here is also pre-measure with a single trolley but using the the inertial unit that, that we spoke of earlier um, in a similar way we shoot to uh, reference points um, in the uh, loaded up into the uh, excuse me into the data collector uh, coupled with the alignment as well we're then able to process this and um, proceed in exactly the same way uh, to produce tamping files. Obviously, an advantage is it's uh, in this image here, it's a single single operator, uh, single, single operator system. Um, flexibility, being able to move from one road to another is quite helpful because the, the, you could be working under traffic. Um, so obviously, being able to uh, exit the track with a single trolley is quite useful. Um, and it's a very generally for those who have been using the, the the twin trolley solution, the transition to a to a to a, an IMS system is, is not is not complicated at all. The the, the methodology is very similar, um, and uh, again productivity is 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 very high, and, and again turnaround time as well for the um, for, for the data to be uh, placed in the uh, or imported into the tamping machine. 
One thing I will say as well is the ability to obviously collect this data either with the VORSIS system or the IMS system and uh, generate absolute coordinates uh, post-processing. So not only are you capturing data for the tamping machine, but also you are capturing at the same time information that can be processed in Guido office uh, for the absolute position of the track. Okay, so very useful. You don't have to go back, you don't have to repeat anything all done at the same time. Sorry, I just had to put that in. Thanks, Steph. <laughs> Next slide. Yeah, please. So in the world of, um, of, of, of uh, point cloud data, uh, we have a solution uh, called Guido Scan, whereby we can uh, generate uh, point clouds that are in relative or in an absolute uh, position. Um, we also have the ability to analyze the point cloud information. Uh, we have various uh, applications where we can uh, generate clearance checks. We can, can we can relate that information to the existing track position or a design track position. Um, we can put in various envelopes. Uh, we've also got the ability to um, assess the, 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 the asset data information. Um, we can generate uh, information um, for, for things like uh, gantries, um, location cabinets or, or, or catch pits that uh, are adjacent to the track. Um, and also we've got the, the ability to recognize linear objects such as platforms, uh, adjacent railway tracks and overhead power lines. So for those who are involved in the overhead power line installations and adjustments, we've got the ability to, um, to, to, to uh, assist, assist your operations with that as well. Okay, Steph. Next one, please. Yeah, it's coming. It's a little bit of a delay. Giddy up, giddy up. So um, the ability to create uh, point clouds or generate point clouds in the uh, uh, in an absolute uh, position um, is, is given in part. Of, we, we have various uh, scenarios, but one of them is with Guido Rec. We can combine Guido Rec, the, the survey tool that we spoke of earlier, with a total station on a tripod, uh, prism on the trolley, and the ability to scan at the same time. So two pieces of software running on the same tablet at the same time. Okay, um, so we can then synchronize all that information the the total station information and the uh and the scanning data and the track information all in the guido scan office software okay and then you've got yourself a uh, an absolute reference point cloud um, okay thanks steph what is also um another solution we have for an absolute point uh Point cloud is the ability to combine the scanner with the inertial system. Um, this will allow us to capture, as per the, the, the image, you can see the, uh, the black and white checker point um, target, whereby we, it appears in the point cloud, we know the coordinates of that position, and we're able to associate all that together in Guido scan office and synchronize it together with the IMU trajectory. So with trajectory and coordinate and point cloud, we, we we have another means of generating a uh, 3D information as well, which can then be analysed using the the various applications. Um, okay, Steph, thanks very much. Again, for certain sites, we we can we can uh, work with the GNSS accuracies by combining the the inertial system and its trajectory together with the uh, with the with the G, with the GNSS uh, position position for correction, and then in the um, in the Guido scan office, um, we can we can follow through with the uh, with the absolute point cloud. So there are three ways of generating this absolute position: either with the total station and scanner, either with the IMU with the scanner, or the GNSS uh, and scanner. So depending on what your needs are. And how the site is, you've got the ability to, uh, to to complete the task. Okay, Steph. So one of the applications that we have uh, within the Guido uh, Scan Office software is the ability to generate clearance uh, reports. So um, 
clearance envelopes uh, that are that define the the, the the train it can either be a single envelope or we can we can we can introduce a three-dimensional envelope as well um, so in both cases we're able finally to to um, to generate cross sections in, in for example DXF or PDF format whereby you've labeled and, uh, and dimensioned these um, the, the, these uh, these cross sections um, we also obviously highlight the zones where there the, there is impact um, where it fails the, the clearance envelope and that information can also be taken out of the point cloud and sent somewhere designers for example and, and you know a discussion can be had to see what happens in these areas but you have a 3d um, data set to, to work with which is, which is essential the the three-dimensional wagon allows us to to create the um, to to, to, um, to analyze the the throw of the of the of the, uh, of the carriage or, or the wagon as it's going around the curve of the, of the track as well so um, it's not just a simple cross section at a certain area we analyze in the three-dimensional field okay so very useful not only that but we can also import point cloud data from external sources uh, for example it could be from mobile mapping it can be from terrestrial scanning with with uh, for example nsx10 on a tripod and you've done multiple setups that information can be uh, brought into um, tbc or trimble realworks for, for uh, processing and then from there the tdx format the trimble format can then uh, be read into to guido scan office not only that we can also bring in data from the last format as well that allows us to um, extract geometry, um, object registration, clearance analysis, and, and documentation. So it's not just the Guido uh, approach as well. We've got within Guido Scan Office, we've got the ability to, to read uh, various other formats, which is essential. Okay, Steph, thanks. So as a as a summary regarding uh, track surveying, um, we've obviously uh, spoken about the, uh, the the classical geodetic approach with the rail shoe and a track bar. But you can see below that the various scenarios uh, using the Guido portfolio, whereby we've got the the, the instrument on the tripod uh, tracking the the, the trolley, um, with, or with the GNSS. Uh, we've got a combo of the two twin trolley solution as well, and then we've got the initial the the uh, the inertial system uh, combined with, with all the various uh, scanning um, and GNSS and total station as well. Um, we have the uh, obviously the, the customized solutions as well, uh, as well, as you can see in the image. Um, if you can just move on to the next slide, please, Steph. And again, um, summary of the scanning uh, solution. We have a, a variety of approaches. It can be a simple relative scan, uh, just with the trolley and the scanner on its own, or again, com combining the the, uh, the total station uh, and scanner for, for, for a geodetic scan. Um, again, we can scan with Vorsys, so we can collect data for, for example, if you're going through a platform, you can, you can pick up all the platform data for gauging, for clearance, um, and also the information for the tamping as well. Uh, so instead of approaching the carrying out two tasks, you can carry out the one task in one hit, or the two tasks in one hit. Very advantageous. And then similarly with the uh, depending on the needs, the Guido IMS and the scanning at the same time, we we can carry that out. Um, and finally, the uh, the Trimble MX9 for mobile mapping. Um, again, that can be mounted on uh, on uh, road rail or high rail equipment on trains for uh, data capture. So I hand you back to you, Steph, are you? Yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh, I just wanna highlight, we have an, a dedicated website for our solutions. It's trimble-railway.com. Uh, if you wanna have more information about the individual solutions, just click on applications or products, uh, and it lists uh, the dedicated solutions. There's spec sheets, data sheets. Uh, with that, there's also a brochure that summarizes uh, our overall portfolio in a little more detail. So please feel free to go to our website. Um, 
also uh, something that I want to highlight here, we have a whole uh, catalog for track specific accessories. Uh, we get this question a lot of where can I where can I find those accessories for rail? I said, yeah, we, we have actually probably most of, of, of the ones that, that you might have in mind uh, in-house. Uh, so please also go to um, to our accessories uh, page here and download the brochure uh, because there's a lot of uh, specially designed and developed uh, handy and useful uh, accessories for uh, track survey and scanning. So with that, uh, please reach out to us, right? We, we have uh, our info, uh, email address. Uh, if you have any kind of questions, you can either reach out to Matt and myself directly or send an email to our info address uh, with all the questions you might have. There are a few questions that came in through the chat window here th throughout the uh, presentation. Um, I wanna read out two of them here that, are, that seem to be relevant. Uh, and Matt, if you wanna answer them, that would be great. So one question okay. was, and this is going back to the scanning. So which scanners are supported uh, in our solution right now? So obviously we have the um, the Trimble TX6 and uh, TX8. And then two key um, uh, scanners that uh, are available. We also um, the it's the uh, S70 Alpha um, Paro scanner as well currently. I believe if there are any others, I will I'll have to get back to you. They're the three I know um, that are being used currently. Um, I'm sure my uh, my learned colleague from uh, from the product manager from scanning will uh, will contact me <laughs> and tell me otherwise that there are others. But they're the three that I know of currently. So the Trimble TX6 and the TX8, um, and also the uh, S70 Alpha from Farah. From yeah, there, there's some functionality with the Trimble uh, scanners that um, are also unique that I want to highlight. Uh, one, for example, is a live view image that you get with the TX8, uh, for example. So while you are scanning in the field, you can actually also implement your clearance envelope. That the XF file that, that is, uh, describes what your clearance window is, you can have that also on your field controller. And while you're pushing the trolley through, it will show you infringements to your, to your clearance envelope right in the field in a live view. So if you're in the field with a scanner and um, uh, the construction company is there, you can actually also directly uh, instruct them or uh, point out where those infringements are just by having the trolley positioned um, and having the live view basically showing where um, an infringement occurs. So that's a unique feature for our Trimble uh, scanners, just to pick one of them. Uh, the other question was around uh, setup times, uh, kind of compare it, you know, how long it takes to set up a, a Guido trolley on the track um, and um, compared to a, to, to a traditional survey machine. So maybe a few comments here. So first of all, the trolley is designed in a way that it's very lightweight. So you can uh, easily with one person get the trolley on the track and off the track. Uh, it's also you know, in case there is a, a situation where you have to clear the track within a few seconds, you can get the trolley off um, off the track and let a let a, a train pass. Um, so the setup times in general depend on depend on uh, what what solution you're using. If you have a geodetic setup uh, with a total station um, and requiring multiple resection points uh, to to measure, of course that that takes a similar amount of time that a, a traditional survey would take. Um, if you use that core-based approach that Matt was highlighting, the forces, um, it's only one measurement uh, to, to start at the beginning of the core and a second measurement uh, at the end of the court. So the setup times between those two methods uh, are significantly different, right? Um, and, and you have um, a very quick uh, setup time for, for, um, for the, um, the, the false is the call based the call based solution right we're talking about uh, also productivity here again as a as a as a number uh, i think that matthew mentioned uh, about one and a half kilometers per hour with a twin trolley system that's what we are seeing uh, in the field 
if you uh, choose a geodetic setup where uh, you're limited a little bit more with, with, with your ranges. Um, a typical setup here would give you about 600 meters, five to 600 meters per hour in productivity. So there's, there's a, depending on the solution and depending, depending on what you do, uh, the, the productivity can change quite a bit. Another comment on the scanning uh, solution. Uh, if you use a, a, a triple TX6 or TX8, there's also functionality. It's called a sweep scan. So basically, when you are at the point uh, that uh, where you have more uh, objects that are interesting, you can actually stop the trolley, uh, hit the sweep scan functionality, and at this moment, it does uh, have a dome scan from there, and it's, it captures uh, that surroundings in more detail. The typical scan mode is a so-called helical scan mode, right, where you push the trolley and the scanner is locked into, into a certain position and it uh, spins vertically and measures point there that way. Um, but you can also do this um, uh, in a, a so-called sweep, sweep scan mode uh, and capture just the higher density of information while, just, while the trolley is, is, uh, is static. Another question came in, what's the typical productivity of a Gato track uh, forces system and IMS system? Um, so to get to get uh, some numbers here with, uh, for example, with a Gato track, typical geodetic setup, uh, you get about uh, 600 meters, I think I mentioned that. Uh, there's also a way of using two trolleys and, and, the, and the geodetic approach, uh, which gets you to about 1400 meters. Um, and then if you have uh, the Guido IMS, uh, the Guido IMS system, this can get you uh, about 2,000 meters per hour uh, and, the, and the twin trolley forces system about 15 to 1,600 meters per hour. So there's a, a variation here of, um, of productivity uh, advantages uh, going from the traditional uh, geodetic setup um, over a twin trolley system to the IMS system with the IMS system being, being the most productive. I will add, I will add Steph, that the, um, with Guido Rec and Track, you can use multiple toll stations as well. And um, we've got the ability to um, set up two or three stations um, and leapfrog as, as, the, as the trolley moves up the track. Um, so for those customers that do have um, two or three S9s, for example, um, they can set them up um, maybe 100, 200 meters apart each, and uh, as the trolley goes past, it can switch from one setup to another. Um, so that as well can can enhance the uh, the speed, if you like, of data collection. Um, yeah. So yeah, there are various levels of of uh, ways of how you can combine the system. Uh, and if you're interested in those details, please please reach out with your specific uh, application and use case, and we we can. Uh, help you answering that specific question for your uh, particular field situation. Another scanning question came in, uh, can I combine scan data from a Gator scan with terrestrial and mobile mapping scan in the same scene? So the answer is yes, yeah, we, you can combine all, all of those things together. Uh, the only difference or the only, only thing you have to keep in mind that depending on where the scan information is coming from, there might be different levels of accuracy. Um, and um, you will eventually, you need to define what is your ultimate outcome that you want to see. Uh, and then some, some of the methods of, of uh, combining scan data might not get you to the absolute uh, accuracy levels. But in general, it is possible to combine those um, into mm. one project. And Matt, you mentioned that I think we have, we have a dedicated software for that called Gedo Scan Office. Uh, software and there's a lot of uh, functionality built into the software to analyze track specific information right uh, from from clearance um, applications to uh, detecting neighboring tracks uh, to uh, detecting line features such as as, as platform um, lines or um, any kind of assets uh, uh, power lines uh, those kind of things. So it's a, it's a powerful suite of tools that you have in the Gator Scan Office software. So there's another question. 
that is uh, scan related. Can I combine, can I use GDOS scan, a GDOS system with GNSS for pre measuring for temping? Um, that is not possible because the accuracies are not good enough for the temping process. There, there's ways of combining, of course, I think Matthew mentioned that, combining GNSS and IMU, um, where the, whereby the IMU provides you with a high accuracy relative um, information. Uh, so that's possible, of course, because you, you only use GNSS to, to correct for the IMU drift. Um, but um, if you use GNSS, uh, on, an, on a trolley system, uh, then you're immediately locked into the, those accuracies coming from GNSS, and they might, they will not be accurate enough for for the tamping process. Yeah. So I'm looking through the questions, see if there's anything else that came in. Yeah, that's a similar question to what um, was already asked uh, on, a, as an example, you have a two kilometer long railway project, uh, you have scanning data, a combination with terrestrial method. Uh, can the GATO scan office use to combine those data? And yes, the answer is yes. You can combine um, static scans, dome scans, um, and, and process them in, in GATO scan office. So a quick time check, we still have a few minutes left. If there's any more questions, please type them into the, um, the chat box. I think I've covered all the ones that are already here. So let's just give it a few seconds. Okay, I think that was the last question that came in. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining this morning or this afternoon. We will make this presentation or this uh, recording available uh, to people that register for this webinar uh, in the next few few days. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out to us. Again, info at trimble-railway.com. Uh, we are happy to, to uh, discuss your project needs and uh, um, help you uh, working on a, on a solution that um, helps you getting your project done quicker and in a more productive way. Well, thank you very much and you all have a good day. Thank you. Thanks.